Well, good morning and welcome to the Great Shepherd's Memo. This is episode 64 and this is Steve Swartz. And what I wanted to do this week was to address a question that I've gotten many times uh, from parents both in our church and, and outside of our church. And that is just the basic question of, of what do you do to raise uh, godly teenagers? Uh, from the time your kids are little, uh, you, you don't imagine that they're going to become uh, bigger and have minds and think for themselves and all of a sudden you blink and you've got a couple of teenagers in your house and sometimes we're not prepared for that. And so uh, what I've done is uh, compiled a little list of things that I've found helpful uh, both in my own home and in counseling uh, with others. All of these things, of course, under the presupposition that our job as parents, according to Ephesians 6, is to raise our children in the admonition of the Lord, um, to have a home that is organized and that is godly and that is centered on Christ. And uh, But I wanted to just give some real practical things here, um, and we'll do a few today and a few uh, next time. Uh, the first, we'll just call these tips, I guess. The first tip I want to talk about is um, being an example. And this is really at the core of raising teenagers because at this point, uh, they are watching your life very carefully. And not only are they watching your life, um, they're now intelligent enough to comment on your life. And so if you're um, consistently impatient with your kids and yet you're expecting them to learn patience, it's not going to be helpful. If you are uh, using various manipulations, uh, such as being overly controlling or raising your voice, uh, yelling, uh, they're going to see the hypocrisy for what it is. And so that won't work. And so the great thing about teenagers is it really makes you examine your own life and live in a way that is a way you want them to emulate and you want them to copy. Another example, or another tip rather, um, we'll call this one relationship versus rules. With relationship versus rules, it doesn't mean you don't have rules in your house. It just means that it doesn't help your, your teens to treat them like they're five years old to give them the same rigidity of rules. Uh, certainly every household has to have rules. Our house has rules. Uh, certain times we do this or that, but there has to be more relationship. Your teens need to understand why those rules are in place. They need to understand the logic behind them. They need to understand how those rules uh, help you love one another and what the relational aspect is. And so at this point, you should be developing that relationship with your teens. If, if your relationship with them is the same as it was when they were five or seven or eight, um, then you're eventually going to emotionally drive a wedge between the two of you because they've grown. They've become little adults. They are, uh, they are real people with real minds and opinions. And so the relationship is, is much, uh, much needed and at times much more important than rules. There's a third uh, tip we might call, and we'll call this one the moral compass. The moral compass. Your teens are on the road to a lifetime of believing certain things. And this is a key time in their lives for you to talk to them uh, at a deep level about things like who you're going to marry, what <clears throat> raising children looks like, uh, what your philosophy of how much you work versus how much you stay with your family is going to look like, uh, what your life in the church looks like. These are all topics that have to come up and you have to be a moral compass um, for and with them. Uh, for teenage boys, uh, how you're going to treat young women. For teenage girls, how you're going to dress and present yourself in a way that's pleasing to the Lord and that's, that's moral in nature, according to 1 Timothy 2 and so forth. So what do you do to provide this moral compass? Well, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of talking, takes a lot of discussion, but that really ties into my fourth tip, and we'll end on this one today, and we'll call this one godly influences. Godly influences, and I want to just briefly give you two ways to give godly influences to your children besides yourself. You are obviously the number one godly influence, but two ways to give godly influences to your teens is first of all in the, in the form of other people. Other believers in Christ, they need input from as many believers as possible. And if you're a parent, you know the power of having somebody else tell your child exactly what you've been telling them. There's great power in that. 
Um, here at Grace Bible Church, our student ministries, that serves to be a godly influence to teach and to train them um, to come alongside parents. It's not a replacement for parents, but coming alongside. Encourage your teens to be, to be mentored um, and to, to have someone who's discipling them. Uh, and you don't have to be the sole influence. Find somebody that you trust to help with that. And then a second way to be a godly influence, this is something we've done in our home for years and we've, we've really benefited from this. This was taught to us, it's not original to us at all uh, in the Swartz home, uh, but that second godly influence are, is books. Uh, your teens ought to be reading books and you, you might say, well, my teen is busy in school. Um, well, they need to be busy about the business of learning how to live a godly life. And so they need to read books. They need to read godly books. You should have a shelf full of them that your kids are working through systematically. And you, you assign them a chapter a week or however you want to do it. Um, in our home, we've even had them write about each chapter to know so that we know and understand that they are, um, that they are taking in this information. And so uh, godly influences other people and have them read books. So with that, uh, we'll do three or four more tips the next time around. Uh, Lord bless you as you attempt to raise uh, kids in the admonition of the Lord. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Grace Shepherd's Memo.